wealth generated through the free enterprise system contributes to a more civilized society and civilized relationships. For most of mankind's existence, he has had to spend most of his time simply eking out a living. In pre-industrial society, and in many places today, the most optimistic scenario for the ordinary citizen was to be able to eke out enough to meet his physical needs for another day. With the rise of capitalism and the rise in human productivity that yielded seemingly ceaseless economic progress, it is, no long, it, is, it is no longer necessary for mankind to spend his entire day providing for minimum physical needs. People are able to satisfy their physical needs with less and less time. Now this made it possible for people to have time and resources to develop spiritually and culturally. In other words, the rise of capitalism enabled the graduate extent the gradual, rather, extension of civilization to greater and greater numbers of people. More of, them have, more of them have time available to read and become educated in the liberal arts and gain more knowledge about the world around them. Greater wealth permits them to attend the arts. It permits them to afford recreation and contemplate a more fulfilling and interesting life and activities and do other culturally enriching things as a result of the engine of technological progress. Now how is all this achieved? In the market system, enterprise profits are performance related. That is, namely, enterprises make profits by finding out what human wants are not being met and finding ways to meet them. In reference to the motivations of the entrepreneur, Adam Smith, the father of economics, said, and I quote him, by directing that industry in such a manner as to produce maybe of the, what is the greatest value, the entrepreneur intends only his gain. And he is in this, as in many other cases, led by an invisible hand to promote an end which is no part of his intention. That may very well describe an entrepreneur like Thomas Watson, Sr., the founder of IBM. Many of the technological gains <coughs> previously unimaginable and previously unimaginable human progress are a direct result of having methods of handling large amounts of data accurately and rapidly. From the 1930s onward, IBM was at the forefront in the development of machinery to do this. The huge benefits that we enjoy and the human progress that has been made as a result of IBM's pioneering work was no part of the intention of Thomas Watson or his successors. They were in it for their own gain, profits. <laughs>